Okay, welcome back everyone. Um, today we're going to take a basic look at some animation. We're going to look at the basic concept of squash and stretch, which is one of the 12 principles of animation. And this is going to teach us a little bit about the animation controls inside of Maya. So uh, let's go ahead and get Maya open. And then once that's open, we're going to go through the process of setting up our project. So again, go up to File, go to Project Window. And this is a three-step project, or process rather. So go ahead and under the Project Window, click New. Give it a name. And this is going to be a balancing ball. It's a real simple um, object that's going to allow us to take a look at how um, animation works. And then make sure you have it in the folder that you want it in. I have it in my Maya project folder, which is where I want it. And then leave these all alone since these are default. Okay, so that's the first step. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to set this as my current project. And I'm going to find where my bouncing ball is, which is right there. I'm going to set it. And then one last thing, even though I don't have anything in the scene yet, I'm going to go ahead and save this scene as. And this is going to be my bouncing ball. And I'm going to call this one because this is my first iteration. And I'm just going to go ahead and save it. Now one thing we may want to do um, is have the auto save turned on. So if we go to settings and preferences under windows, settings and preferences, go to your preferences. And another way to get there is this little guy down here in the corner that looks like he's running away from the sun. Well, that is also would take you to your settings and preferences. And under files and projects right here, click on that and then check to see if your autosave is enabled. By default, it is not. And once you're in here, you can also change, um, you know, if you want it to prompt before it saves or just saves in the background, you can limit the number of auto saves and you can set it up for how many times uh, it saves. Now, one thing I have noticed that if you're using the student um, license, it'll pop up almost every single time telling you that it's uh, saving a student version. And that does get a little annoying, so it may not be something you want to have on or you may want to limit the number of uh, intervals. But then again, if Maya decides to crash on you while you're working, at least saves um, your project in, you know, sometime within the last 10 minutes. So as a default. All right. So with that book work done, let's go ahead and get started. First, I'm going to bring a sphere into my scene by clicking the sphere up here in the top. And you can see it's just a typical little sphere. And it's uh, pretty much the most complicated part of the modeling <laughs> that we're going to do today. Now, the next thing we may want to do is add a texture to it. And um, the reason why we want a texture for me is I like being able to see when I set the rotation and do the squash and bounce um, so I can visualize it. And what I like to use is a, a beach ball. You can use any other type of ball and you can even apply that later on. But uh, beach ball, because of the way of the lines are set up on, on the color panels, you can clearly see the rotation and how the squash and stretch is looking while you're working with it. So um, I just typed in beach ball texture map into Google and these came up, you know, quite a few different choices. I like this one. It comes out pretty nice. So I'm going to uh, right click and let's uh, save picture as. Now, one thing I have done is I've set up um, texture folders that I can put my textures into so I keep them for other projects. But what you've noticed is when I hit the save as, Windows is helping me out a little bit and it says it wants to put it in Maya projects, bouncing ball, and my source images. That's exactly where you want it in your project. The source images are where any of your texture uh, files and things like that will go. So I'm going to go ahead and set, hit save. You can always go in later on and copy that out. One other thing I want to point out is you may want to go uh, set up an account with this um, particular site, textures.com. They uh, have a bunch of different textures and I was looking for beach balls. Unfortunately, they don't have beach balls on this site, but they do have a lot of beach textures and you can get some uh, really high resolution ones with normal maps to help uh, make the 3D look more realistic. And then they also have a bunch of nice pictures of the beach. So um, you could possibly use those for textures later on and other projects. All right. So now I have the texture saved in my project and I have my 
window here, if I make sure I'm in object mode, so if yours does not look green like this, uh, you may want to go in, right click, and select object mode just to make sure it looks green. And then right click again and hold down your mouse button. So hold down your right mouse, right mouse button and go down to assign new material. And I'm going to work with Arnold in this project. So I'm going to click on Arnold and AI standard surface. I'm just going to add a standard surface to it. And you can see that now it popped up white right here. Over here, sometimes it comes up default uh, right away for you. And other times it doesn't. It does this. And you have to go look for your standard surface up on these tabs under your attribute editor. This is your attribute editor. You can see that I have some other tabs here. It may, yours may be defaulted in this or it may not have anything at all. And if that's the case, these buttons along here can turn these tabs on and off for you. Um, whoops, didn't want that one. That's all right. We can close that tab by right clicking on it. I want to go back to my attributes editor, which is this button right here. And now I have my object uh, surface area, this texture or shader. And here under base, where the color is, if we clicked on this, we could change the color and make it different colors. If you just wanted to make a blue, red, green, whatever color you wanted to make, you can make this ball. I'm going to add a file to it, so that beach ball file. Over here in this checker flag, if you click on the checker flag, this create node, uh, render node will pop up. And you can select file right here. So you can see it has all of this highlighted. I select file. And now it does this. And right here where it says image name, there's a file folder. If I click on that file folder, by default, Maya will say, okay, we're in this project, your bouncing ball project, and I'm going to go to your source images. And there it is. There's my beach ball color. If I click on it, you can see that there's a sample that pops up here in this window. That's the one I want. So I'm going to go ahead and say open. And it opens, and you can see that it's here, but nothing happens on my ball. And that's because of the uh, view mode that we're in. Quick fixes of this is just hitting six on your keyboard. So again, hit six and it should pop up just like this. And I've used this texture before, so I knew this was going to work. Uh, we don't have to make any modifications to it and it gives me a nice looking beach ball. All right, so I'm happy with that. And now I'm going to click on my beach ball and I'm gonna get ready to start uh, making my adjustments. You know, one other thing we may want to do is we may want to add a plane or a surface for it to actually bounce against to help better visualize what we're trying to do. Because this area isn't a very large area. We could use this grid as our um, frame of reference. But I'm going to go ahead and add just a surface area and so that uh, we can kind of see how the beach ball is going to behave. Um, give us a visualization of where it's going to strike and with, as it bounces. So uh, first I'm going to click the beach ball. I'm going to hit my W key or you can use the move tool over here. And I'm going to just move it up and out of my way for right now over here to the side. Kind of get an idea of where I want to start. And now I'm going to use the plane button and I'm going to add a flat surface for my ball to bounce on. So I'm going to click on my plane. You can see that this square pops up in the middle with a bunch of um, subdivisions and hit R on your keyboard. If you zoom out a little bit, kind of get a good feeling for where we're at. I'm going to grab it by the center and I'm going to make it a certain width. I might use the entire width of the grid. And then because it's still not long enough, I want a much longer surface for my ball to bounce on. I'm going to pull the one side and I'm going to stretch it out. Now I'm going to move it to the right just a little bit. Give me a starting point for my ball. And I'm going to use this as my animation surface just to help me visualize a little better. And I'm going to add a texture to it. So again, right click and hold with the plane highlighted in the object mode. Go to assign new material. I'm going to select Arnold, Arnold standard surface. And I'm just going to leave it this bright white color right now so I can see a little bit better of what's going on. All right. Now I'm going to go back to my beach ball. I'm going to select it. I'm going to raise it up a little bit. Get kind of an idea of where I want it to move. And one of the things I like to do at the very beginning is set all of my keyframes. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through 
and I'm going to set the points where I'm going to have it actually bouncing and then going back up, bouncing and going back up without doing any of the squash or stretch or any of the other animation, just to get the initial keyframe set because there are times when I want the ball to be back to its original round shape. So I'm going to go to my channel box editor right here. And you can see that uh, right here it tells me that my ball currently scale is 1, 1, and 1, and my translation positions for my Y and Z. Okay, so what I can do is if I click on the top one and drag down, I can select all of them down to my scale. I'm not going to use the visibility. I'm not going to adjust it because we're going to leave it on the entire time. I'm going to right click and I'm going to select key selected. And what you'll notice is down here along the bottom, I have a little red line up here. And that little red line tells me that I've just set a keyframe along my animation timeline, which is right down along here. My animation timeline is currently set to 120 frames at uh, frame, 5 frames per interval. You can see that. And I can click and drag this slider bar, my slider bar, along that timeline. Nothing's happening because I don't have any animation set for my ball yet. I haven't moved anything else. It's just set in this initial position. So make sure it's back at 1. The other thing that you notice is we have this long gray bar here and what we can do is we can grab that bar and if I slide it to the right it goes out to 200. So really my current timeline is set out to 200 but we can only see 120 frames at this point in time. As I move it to the right you'll see that it shows 200 here and 81 there because that's what's visible in my timeline. Over here you see that um, set at 120 and 200. So 120 is what's visible with my entire uh, time being 200 frames. I can adjust this by clicking on the end of it and I can move it down so that it shows um, you can see that we start seeing more keyframes by number and if I move it right it now breaks it up and jumps to fives and then eventually it'll jump to tens but it'll make it so that my entire 200 can be fit in here if we move this along. I can change these numbers here as well to show which ones can be seen in my timeline and then how long my actual animation is. I'm going to leave it at 200 frames for right now. Over here you see that we're set at 24 frames per second. That's where I want to be set. If we hit the down arrow we have some other choices. I'm going to leave it at 24 frames per second. That's um, typically what standard animation is at right now. And if you ever need to, you can click on the little guy here with the sun chasing him. And it takes you to your time slider because that's this is embedded in your time slider. But you can select any of the other categories once you're here. And you can see that my frame rate is set at 24 frames per second. And my playback speed is 24 frames per second. I'm going to leave this at the default for right now. So I'll hit cancel. The other thing is this little um, arrows that are pointing towards each other in a circle and then sort of a plus symbol in the middle. This is your auto keyframe. If you select it, it makes it so that any time you make a change to your object, it will add a uh, place a keyframe there. So I'm going to move forward a few seconds, or a few frames rather, and you can see that once I move this ball in any position and let go, now I have a new red line appear because it has just given me a new um, keyframe for that moment. All right, so I think that's it for this video. This has been about 14 minutes. We got everything all set up. In our next video, we'll actually start doing the animation. Thank you.